Okay, let's attempt. Let's attempt 923. Okay, a 55 kilogram acrobat must jump high and land on his brother's shoulders. Okay, so just just think about jumping and just jumping and your feet coming off the ground. Okay, to accomplish this, he leaps from a crouched position. Let's try and draw a crouched position. Okay, I'm going to draw that as his center of mass. Okay, you got the idea. Center of mass. And there's your head. And there are your arms. Okay, so he's crouched. Okay. He leaps from a crouched position all the way up. Okay. So the way I'm going to draw this guy is... Okay, let me just actually finish it. He leaps from a crouched position to a height where his center of mass... Okay, this is the center of mass is 1.2 meters above the ground. His center of mass is 400 millimeters above the, the ground in the crouched position and 900 millimeters above the ground when his feet leave the ground. Okay, so just imagine yourself like crouching and then jumping up and lifting your legs up off the ground. Okay, so let me just start it. So um, you can start like this and this was 0.4 meters and then he jumps he his legs go straight there's the center of mass which is 0 0.9 0 0.9 and then finally his center of mass is uh, 1.2 so I don't know let's consider this to be state 1 stage 2 stage 3 okay so 0.4 meters in the crouched, 0.9 is this entire time from 0.4 to 0.9, his feet are still on the ground and his legs are straightening, okay, and then from 0.9, from this point, from stage 2 to 3, he's in the air, okay, until he reaches 1.2, okay, so we have the idea of what's happening. What is the average force exerted on him by the ground during the jump? Okay. So, the way that we can look at this is the, the force exerted on him. Him, we can consider to be the center of mass. Okay. So, um, forget about everything else. We just care about this center of mass that's moving from 0.4 to 0.9 to 1.2. What is the force exerted on, on him during the jump? Well, we can think of the force that's exerted on him is the force that is exerted by his legs onto the center of mass. Think about it. If you're crouching down and you jump up, there is, there is the, basically there is this force your legs are pushing on the ground and there is this reaction force that is uh, that is really causing your center of mass to accelerate upwards. Okay, so we can think of it as there is a force, you can even say of your legs, onto the center of mass. Okay? That's your center of mass. All right, so so there is this force, and it's and it's pushing you up, and then at a certain point, the the this force stops acting. Right, it, uh, only while your legs are touching the ground is this force acting, but then while the the, the center of mass is now in, or you're in the air, when your legs stop touching, then there's no more applied force from the ground. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So how are we going to calculate this, this force now? Well, we know that work is change in energy. Okay, so we can try to use, use this, uh, this idea here. Now, think about, 
Think about having, there's your hand, say now there's your hand, and you have a rock there, and you move your hand, to, you're throwing this rock up. You move your hand to that position, so you've moved it over that distance, and then at that point the rock goes free and goes to some height. Okay? Now, we can agree that the only time that we've applied... Uh, a force to this rock is during this this delta x here, right? So this it's only during this distance over here that we are applying a force of the hand onto the rock, and then from this point to that point, um, it is well. Let's put it this way: at this point, the velocity is zero, and then at this point, the velocity is maximum. And then it slows down to this maximum height and then obviously falls down. Now, I want you to consider it the same way over here with jumping up. Um, from this point 1 to point 2, there's a force of the legs being applied to the center of mass. And then point 2 to point 3, the center of mass is just, is just rising up to its maximum height where its potential energy is maximum and its um, kinetic energy has gotten down to zero again. Okay, so um, we can say now the work done is the work done during sta from stage one to two. So it is the force of the legs. Remember work is force times displacement and your displacement <clears throat> x has to be what? It has to be the displacement only during this time, the, uh, over this distance, right? Remember this analogy, delta x. So this is x while the legs are in contact with the floor. And then, um, what kind of energy do we have in this problem? We've got two types of energy. We've got delta k and we've got delta u. Delta k is simply the change in kinetic energy. And delta U is the change in potential energy. But if we consider from point 1 to point 3, what is our change in kinetic energy from point 1 to point 3? Well, we start off with zero velocity at point 1. And at point 3, we have what? Zero velocity. So our delta K, if we are considering between point 1 and point 3, our delta K will be zero. So our this work has only changed the potential energy. So, what is the potential energy? It's going to be mg delta x. Um, the entire time while it was in motion, which is from 1 to 3. Remember, it moved from 0.4 meters to 1.2 meters. Does that make sense? So, it's the same as saying the work done is only during this these state one and two but the potential but it increases the potential energy between one and three okay so the force this is what we're looking for what is the average force exerted on him by the ground is then equal to m which is 55 g which is 9.81 the displacement of the motion which is from this point 4 to 1.2 what is that point 6 it's point 8 divided by the displacement only during contact which is point 4 to point 9 which is point 5 right and then this should give you just want to make sure here should give you 860 should give you 860 Newton okay so the F of the legs on the center of mass is 860 but please make sure you get the idea is that we're only doing work during this from stage 1 to stage 2 and then that work is converted fully into potential energy Okay, now, B, 
So that was A. B says, what is his maximum speed? What is the maximum speed? So we've already seen, where is his maximum speed in this, in this idea? The maximum speed will be here, V max. Right? Because you start, start from zero, you, apply, you, you um, do work on this uh, center of mass, and the work stops over here. The work of the hand or the work of this applied force stops at point two, and it has increased the kinetic energy to a maximum kinetic energy. And then as soon as it leaves the hand or it leaves the ground, then the velocity starts to decrease until zero. So your maximum kinetic energy is here, which means your maximum speed will be here. So we need to now consider exactly the same idea, but let's consider it between point one and point two. So the work done is equal. Let's, let's look at between what, point one to point two now. This was between point one and point three. The work done is the same, but now this work is at point two is converted into delta K plus delta U. Right over here, we considered between point one and point three, and that work um, changed the potential energy from point four to point uh, from point four to one point two. But over here we have to consider the kinetic energy at point two and the potential energy at point two. Over here, we just had the potential energy. There was no kinetic energy. Over here, we've got both potential, uh, kinetic and potential. Okay, so this is half mv squared. This is the velocity over there. And then this will be, what will this be, guys? Your mgh your, or your mg delta x. Right, it's not going to be your, your maximum height there. It's going to be mg delta x between 1 and 2. So it's going to be that change, right? I hope that makes sense. So your work, your work was simply, this work is, this, is the same in both problems. So the work is the force times x during contact. So it was um, it's just that f legs times delta x contact. And it's the same over here. This is the same. It's contact. Okay. So this is 860 times 0.5 equals half times 55 times V squared, which is what we're looking for, we're looking for V, plus 55 times 9.81, again times 0.5. If you solve for this, you should get 2.41 meters per second. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't have much else to say. Good luck, eh?